Hello, so it's been a little while since my last video. Uh, I've got the sun in my eyes. Uh, and uh, for Christmas, I got an AR drone from a little French company called Parrot Wireless. And uh, um, this has been out for a few months and there's probably already plenty of videos on YouTube, um, but I'm going to do a walkthrough and uh, demo. So, in the box, you get an AR drone. You also get one battery, uh, you get a balanced charger, and this thing's actually pretty cool uh, if you zoom in there. Uh, your status light is red while it's charging, and then I think what it does is this is one, two, three, this is a three cell battery. Um, it, uh, these blink depending on uh, which cells are a little imbalanced, and it balances them while it charges them. At least that's my guess. I'm pulling that out of, out of uh, somewhere else. Thin air. <laughs> so, uh, and then of course you have a wall socket, and then uh, if you live in another country besides the USA, um, you get a little box here filled with a little box here filled with uh, to us anyway foreign connectors. They're foreign, forging, forging. So, so, um, uh, so this thing flies with an eye device. Um, you can fly it with an iPod Touch. I have an iPod Touch fourth generation here with a little case on it. Um, uh, you can also use an iPhone. Uh, or an iPad and uh, there's a few apps out there for it. The one that flies the AR drone you download from the App Store. So I'm going to take it out of the box and show you everything else that it comes with. And there it is. Ooh, ah. Um, kind of a neat design. Uh, basically these two props spin this way and then these two props spin this way like that and then there's some little black magic there where it, it uh, changes the RPMs of various props and it makes it do this, and do this, and do this, and this. And, uh, and there's a three axis gyro in here, front facing camera on the bottom, USB port, which I've never ever had anything to plug into, sonar, Damn, sonar. Um, reset switch, an unpair, no, no, yeah. Are these lights or switches? They're, they're switches, they're little pushes, pushy thingies. Don't get, I'm getting all technical, I know. And then of course we have a little status LED. Oh, and the down facing camera. This camera is used by the microprocessor in here to hold it in place because it looks at the ground. It's kind of like how an optical mouse works. It looks at all the little bumps on the surface and uh, um, you know tracks. So in this case, it's the other way around. It looks at the surface and can kind of help hold its position automatically. So you can literally just launch this thing and walk away. And if it's in outdoor mode, it'll feel some wind, it'll kind of drift, but then the camera will see the ground, it'll stay in, in, in place. So inside here, there's really not much to see. Uh, you have another battery. I bought two batteries. Um, I keep this one tucked behind the uh, Velcro because it's a new battery just to help give that curl. And uh, um, the battery is on a little cushion. You can see there. And the whole thing is actually on a cushion. See, so if I, if I push here, uh, um, that keeps all the electronics all nice and stable and minimal vibration. They probably do that for the three-axis gyro because you, you don't want a gyro to vibrate too much, just like on a scale uh, model helicopter. So this is the out, or indoor hull. The idea is you can be flying around and boom, bump into a tree. Well, I guess you don't have too many trees indoors, but you can bump into a wall. And, yes, I can see <laughs> walls. Uh, and uh, um, it'll just bump and you're okay. Um, the only problem was is we were flying this indoors, me and my cameraman here, and uh, it got a little too close to a counter. And the problem is, is this sonar on the bottom is kind of stupid. Um, actually, would it be sonar or radar? Whatever. This rangefinder dealie on the bottom here, what it did is I got it a little too close to the counter in our kitchen, and it's trying to uh, stay a certain number of feet from the ground. Well, it doesn't understand the concept of the, the level of the ground changing. So um, it just saw the counter and went, oh, I'm too low, and it went up like that, like it was gonna hit the ceiling. And uh, I snatched it out of the air. It was pretty amazing. So that's the indoor hall. This is the outdoor hall. And uh, the instructions say that you should use the outdoor hall outdoors um, so that you get better performance off these blades. Um, this can fly outdoors in very light wind. Uh, there is a very light breeze here at beautiful Lake Elizabeth Park. There's even somebody flying a kite way out there in the distance. So gives you an idea there is a little bit of wind here. And uh, um, this thing does get a little weird in the wind. 
um, and you'll see some of the complaints that I have about this. That should totally be the title of this video. Weird in the wind. Weird in the wind, because <laughs> that's me. Um, anyway, so this just slips over the pro camera protrusion like that, and then there's nice. a little magnet, and it goes, well, it's supposed to make a little snap, but whatever. Anyway, so the camera is still protected by the outdoor hull, cool. and it kind of looks like a little spaceship, which is kind of neat. So I'm going to plug this thing in, and uh, we are going to launch it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is do that, this, don't flip my butt, um, this way, like such. Oh, and there's one other added bonus to this amazing high-tech high tech carrying case that the AR drone comes with. On the back is a helipad, which is hella cool. Um, but uh, I never bothered using it upside down, so we'll just move this over here as such. Take this guy, put it here, and turn on the AR drone. Take the hull off. By the way, this grass can get wet. On the bottom of each motor, you can zoom in here, on the bottom of each motor is an electronic speed control. They are exposed circuits. You do not ever, ever want to land this in wet grass or you will probably ruin it. Don't do that. All right, so we're gonna open this up. This is not wet grass, it hasn't rained in a little while. Are you getting any glare off the sun, Mr. Cameraman? No? Okay, good. All right, so I'm gonna secure my battery strap and I'm going to plug this on. Now you don't wanna move it while it's booting up. There are four LEDs, one on each motor, and uh, right now they're all red, or at least they should be. I can't see it because of the sun. Um, but then what happens is they go green, 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 and that means it's booted. You don't want to move it because it's got a three-axis gyro. Again, just like a model helicopter, you never want to move a model helicopter when you first turn it on because the gyro has to center itself. So, let's see. Yep, those are green. Um, another neat thing, when this is flying, the front LEDs stay green and the rear LEDs turn red so you can see what direction it's flying a little more easily. Um, this thing also has a uh, multiplayer game where you, that you can buy off the App Store for iDevices, um, where you can take two of these and dogfight each other. It's pretty cool. And then what they do is, to simulate gunfire, the front LEDs go red, green, red, green really rapidly like they were like, you know, cannons shooting or something like that. I know it's nerdy, but I think it's cool. So, this thing is on. And I'm gonna turn it over here as such. Actually, I'm gonna face it towards the camera guy. All right. And uh, now I'm going to turn, actually, camera guy, if you can come over here real quick. Um, so I'm gonna, good, you're, you're doing shade, that's good. So here's my iPod touch. So I'm going to go, is that focusing okay? Can oh, you yeah. see it? Okay. So we're gonna go into settings, go into Wi-Fi. Actually, I think I'll probably just turn airplane mode off. Off, there we go. Wi-Fi is still off, so we're going to go ahead and turn that on. And it should see the AR drone automatically and connect to it, as the AR drone provides a Wi-Fi hotspot. No, you can't browse the web through the AR drone. <laughs> um, also, I'm going to turn off Bluetooth, because I was having some range issues earlier. And Bluetooth also runs on 2.4 gigahertz. I can't see any reason why it would hinder it, but... I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off, because I really only have one complaint so far about this thing. And it does seem a little twitchy. So, I'm going to go ahead and close that, and then fire up free flight. There it goes, connected, boom, done. Um, if there are any new firmwares, what will happen is this will get automatically updated through uh, the App Store, and then uh, the next time you connect to the AR drone through the software, it um, uh, uploads a new firmware to it. And then supposedly that makes it better, because new firmware is better. So, as you can see, this is the live view. You can see me there. There's my foot. And uh, that pretty much starts right away. So camera guy, if you could stand back over there. You can stand in the shade. It's good. Ah, there we go. <laughs> God, I was starting to go blind myself. Yeah, you get a little less glare too off the camera. So uh, I'm going to take off. Um, and I'll do a walkthrough.